the Western person is quite free, quite intelligent, and therefore sensitive. When someone is sensitive and intelligent, they want something nice. So when they look at all the world politics and the sadness and the limitations, they want more. They don't want to limit themselves to the sadness. They know we don't have to go and fight. There are other ways. So they're like, okay, let me look at India, the grandfather of the world. So this has been going on for a long time. This is not new. You know, I, you will be surprised if I to, told you that uh, Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain. Mark Twain had a guru in Varanasi called Brahmananda. Could you believe Mark Twain having a guru? It's a very funny character, is Mark Twain. But he had a guru. It's, you know, gurus are wrongly presented. You go to YouTube, they're swearing at gurus every day. Gurus are your lo beloved friend. They are friends. They never look at hierarchy. They hate hierarchy. They hate all this, you know, falling at your feet and all that. We, everything is symbolic for them. If a guru is uneducated, he might want you to fall on his feet. If a guru is educated, he doesn't want you to fall at the feet, nothing. He wants you to be happy. And he's just a buddy. You know, so but even Samuel Clemens had a guru. Many more, you know? So those sensitive, intelligent people, they always want to explore. They want freedom. They want to see. They want to see their choice, their options. They go to China. They go to India. They go everywhere. And nothing wrong in what they're doing. It's perfectly all right. You know? And the other is, sometimes people want to belong somewhere. You know? They are not happy because in the hometown, it is limiting. Let us say, I'm just saying hometown, you know, like your situations or your group is limiting. And you don't want to limit yourself to that limited community, I mean group. You want to get out of the limitations. And the only thing that is available is Osho and me. <laughs> you know? So there are two reasons why mainly people come to India. And believe me, I have collected enough video clips with the help of Natalia where Freud himself is only getting his information from earlier translations of the Vedas. He's lying when he says that with a bit of a luck and the help of a friend and a lot of my effort, I found the unconscious. That is a lie. We know he took it from Frederick Schellings. You know, Schellings is a generation earlier than him. And Schelling's father also was a Sanskritist. We know everything. But what I'm saying is that, as I said, when we look at our location as a limited space, then we want copyright, intellectual property right, you know, patent right. When you look at the world as yours, so what? Giovanni is reading the Bhagavad Gita, what I care, I'll read the Bible. You know? Doesn't matter. You have so much choice. Okay, in the universe that we are living in today, when we are living in today, there are so many things to choose from. You know, it's a choice that you make. You know, you can go and do Kung Fu. It's your choice. You know, whatever, because I can come and learn to cook in Mexico. That's a choice. The world is not anymore, the world never was like tradition. You know what I mean? The idea that I should wear this, uh, you, I'm a good example, these three lines, or that way, and a lot of beads, you know? It's nice and interesting. If I know what the meaning of the beads are, what are the three lines, stuff like that. But even then, if I know all the meaning, which I know, why do I want to wear it? I have all the beads in my bags, you know? What for I want to decorate myself this way? I understand the meaning. The meaning is more important than just the decorations, you know? So what I'm saying is that the world is yours today. You want to eat su uh, sushi, by means, all means, go and eat that sushi, you know? The world belongs to everybody. In my book, The Divine Initiation, my starting line is very beautiful. 
feather on myself. You know? I'm saying the spiritual culture of the world belongs to everybody. Christianity belongs to me as much as you. The Quran belongs to me as much as you. They have become human legacies. They're not belonging to small communities anymore. They are treasures of the universe. I say everybody has the right to protect every spiritual history and culture and science. Nobody has any right to destroy any culture, any history, and freedom. It is human legacy, so choose whatever you want. You want a guru? You take a guru. You don't want a guru? Say hello to me. <laughs> you know? Simple as that. But one thing though, my true personal experience, this is my personal experience, my opinion, right? You don't have to buy this. I was searching, seeking, searching, seeking. I went to the Dalai Lama, I went to Osho, I met Krishnamurti. I went the whole length and breadth of India looking for Tantra because my grandmother told me. My grandmother is my principal teacher of Tantra. So I was listening to her. She said, you are always relating with me as a grandma. Go and look for a guru. In the process, I met many, many teachers. You know, I was seeking. And I really believed that there are things that we don't know these guys have. You know what I mean? Different dimensions of experience and history and culture they, they, they possess. Seeking someone, you know, seeking wisdom is nice. I say read as much as you can if you have free time. Watch the television and get good information, but television always gives you bad information, makes you unhappy. You know, always is quarreling. And so choose, enjoy. It's your life. I have no right to interfere your life. You know what I mean? As a guru even, I cannot interfere with your life. So one of my old students came to me and said, I want you to be my role model. I said, go to hell. <laughs> I cannot be a role model. You are your role model for yourself. You know, that's why we don't give names. You know, we don't call you Ramdas. When you actually, Suzanne, and if I call you Ramdas, it's a big sin. <laughs> so we don't give all those kind of names. We just say, if you're Mary, we are happy with your name Mary. Your dharma is to be Mary, because you come from that latitude, that longitude, that part of the world where you are yourself. <clears throat> and we appreciate that. We don't have to change your name, decorate it with beads, put some dots on your forehead. We don't have to do all that. Eventually, this knowledge, if, you, if what I'm talking here may sound different, blah, 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 it's the same in all the spiritual cultures, believe me. I've seen this. And underlying all these concepts are mathematics. And they are the same. So it is a universal culture. We are talking about a culture that is timeless. That's the only difference that I'm saying. You know? Everything is yours to choose. If I die, it's over, finish. Gurus are dead. The emotions of the gurus are dead. The happiness of the guru is dead. You know, very few gurus are happy nowadays. <laughs>